If you've ever been exposed to physics before, you may have come across two seemingly strange quantities, torque and work. But before I explain the strangeness between these two quantities, I first have to explain what these quantities even mean. First off, you might have heard of work before as its other name, energy. Its definition in physics is just the force exerted over some distance, or force, times displacement. Well, technically, we can only multiply this force exerted in the direction of our displacement. So in a case like this, we can't just naively multiply our force times our displacement, but we must first calculate the magnitude of the force in the direction of our displacement, which with a little trigonometry turns out to be the magnitude of the force times the cosine of the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector. And so our formula for work turns out to be work is equal to our magnitude of our force times the magnitude of our displacement times the cosine of theta. Notice that work is not a vector. It can be negative if the force vector is pointed in the opposite direction of the displacement vector, but it doesn't point in any direction. I will leave it up to you to think about why this is true. Also, what are the units of work? Well, looking back at our formula, we get newtons, the unit of force, times meters, the unit of displacement. And in physics, we give this unit another name, joules. Okay, enough about work. Now let's talk about torque. Torque is basically just the rotational analog for force. So if you have a force that is rotating something like a bar, torque is just the distance from the axis and the point where the force is exerted, we'll call this quantity displacement, times the force, since if you increase the displacement, you increase the torque. But as we did with work, we can't just plug in the magnitude of the force in a situation like this. We only want the component of the force perpendicular to the direction of the displacement, which with a little trigonometry turns out to be the magnitude of our force times the sine of the angle between the direction of the force and the displacement. And so our formula for torque turns out to be torque is equal to the magnitude of our displacement times the magnitude of our force times sine of theta. Now is torque a vector? Actually, yes. The direction of torque is just the axis of rotation in 3D, which is perpendicular to both of our force and our displacement. And so our formula is actually torque is equal to the magnitude of our displacement times the magnitude of our force times sine of theta times n hat, where n hat is just the unit vector perpendicular to both of our displacement and our force. Now this is where the strangeness begins. What are the units of torque? Well, looking at our formula, we get Newton meters, which is exactly the same as the units of work. So are the units of torque joules? Actually, no. If you ask any physics teacher, they will tell you that torque and work definitely don't have the same units, but why? To answer this question, we must first look at the question of how do you multiply vectors? Since both of these formulas are multiplying vectors together. If you look it up, you get two different answers, the dot product and the cross product. The dot product is kind of a measure of how much two vectors are pointing in the same direction, and the result will be a scalar. And the formula for the dot product of two vectors, a and b, is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of theta, which is the same formula as the formula for work. And so we can just rewrite our formula for work as work is equal to force dotted with our displacement. That makes things a lot simpler. Now what about the other way to multiply vectors? The other way to multiply vectors together only works for 3D vectors, and it is called the cross product. And the cross product is kind of the opposite of the dot product. Instead of measuring how much two vectors are pointing in the same direction of each other, it measures how much two vectors are perpendicular to each other, and it also returns a vector in the direction that is perpendicular to both of the vectors that we multiplied. And that obeys the right hand rule, which says if you multiply two vectors a and b, the resulting vector will point in the direction of your thumb on your right hand if you point your index finger in the direction of a and your middle finger in the direction of b. Also notice, because of this, order with the cross product matters. a cross b is not equal to b cross a. And so our formula for a cross b is equal to magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times sine of theta times n hat which is the same formula we found for torque, and so we can rewrite our formula for torque as torque is equal to our displacement cross our force. And this is, I think, the reason why these two quantities are different. They both use different ways of multiplying vectors together. 
Now this may have seemed obvious to you in the first place, but I think the coolest part about this is that the fact that the cross product only works in three dimensions. If we look at the cross product as torque, then this makes sense. There is no such thing as 4D torque. Or rather, torque only requires three dimensions to be fully explained. An axis of rotation, the direction of the displacement, and the force. And this gives, at least I think, a better way to think about the cross product. But anyway, I at least hope this video was helpful to you to more understand work, torque, the dot product, and the cross product. I hope I see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.